Overseas workers wanting a mining job, what to do. Conversations about mining. Hi, Jess, how are you? Good, Andrew, how are you going? Yeah, really good, thanks. And today we've got a question, or I get lots of questions on the YouTube channel, Australian Mining for New Starters, from people overseas wanting to know what they can do to get a mining job here. And from my perspective, and I'll ask your perspective in a second, but from my perspective, education's the key. Because what you want to do is you want to present to the employer somebody that they can get up to speed in a short amount of time. If you go in green so you don't know anything about mining on day one, it normally takes two to three months to get somebody up to speed. And if you're coming in from overseas or anywhere else in Australia for that matter, that makes it difficult for employers. If you educate yourself and have your resume done and you know um, have all that information in place and knowledge in place, then the employers can get you up to speed in three or four weeks. And that makes a huge difference. And that's you're in with all the employers, showing them that you're ready and you're able to be thrown into the deep end and be a productive member of crew as soon as possible. That's the big thing for the employers. From If you're coming in from overseas, that's how you can make yourself desirable. If you're coming in from the eastern states to Kalgoorlie or somewhere like that, that's how you make yourself desirable. Because if you don't know anything about mining, it doesn't matter if you've got truck experience or you know heavy rigid experience or whatever experience you're bringing in it with um the equipment if you don't know how the mine works it still takes them two to three months to get you up to speed so you need that component um have you got anything that you want to add to that yeah i think that's a really good point to make bring up and um, i have a lot of inquiries too and from people that actually have mining experience but overseas and it is a lot different here our safety standards are a lot different and um, the types of roles can vary, especially, you know, equipment utilised and the type of mining we do and, and how, how it works, the structure of everything and, you know, the swings you'll do and the rosters. It's all um, very kind of streamlined over here and it's very set in stone how it works where it can be a bit kind of faster and looser in some places overseas. Um, and you may not have had experience with the safety and everything. So I think the education is a massive part of it. And then also, obviously, from our point of view, it's having your resume be able to get through those ATS systems. So I have loads of people contact me almost every day, uh, you know, from all over the world. And they've got amazing experience that, you know, engineers and like, you know, operators and people that have worked in production mining for a long time. Uh, but their resume doesn't really reflect the experience that they've had. Uh, they're either very, very basic and they don't have enough information or they're very, very drawn out, like seven or eight pages of a lot of, um, you know, sales kind of talk. That's not going to get your resume through the ATS systems. And even um, if it does, it's just not going to get read by the foreman. They just won't it's read not it. Gonna, they won't because, it, you know, it. Yeah, they're just going to go next to the, you know. Um, so it's really important to have all that mining and safety terminology. It's also important to um, reach out to someone, uh, reach out to us. We're both happy to answer questions and make sure you meet those minimum requirements. Can your international or interstate driver's license, is that meeting a minimum requirement of the job you're applying for? Do you have to have a police clearance, an address within the state where you're applying? There's, there's a lot of kind of moving parts to figure out, especially if you ask, like, doing a course or getting your resume and applying for roles to try and have something lined up for when you get here. So there's quite a few things that you need to uh, think about. It can all be done uh, while you're back home, wherever you're from, um, over east or overseas. Um, and it can be done quite, it's quite a simple process, but it's just making sure you've got all those ducks in a row so that when you are applying, you're really getting results. You're not getting unsuccessful, 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 because it can get really disheartening once you start applying and you know you're getting nowhere yeah. so it's yeah it's definitely an amazing industry to get into and if you do have that experience you'll probably really enjoy the mining industry in australia it's really it's it's awesome it's an awesome um you know industry to get into and there's like andrew has talked about a lot there's a lot of different roles you can move into and a lot of different things you can try out um different areas but definitely have everything lined up have your resume on point make sure that you are contactable especially if you're overseas Brain phone number Australian phone number um, and yeah make sure you meet those minimum requirements and have yourself have that education so that you can talk the talk so that when they call you for a phone interview or they you know that you do a zoom call you can sit there and you can talk to them about safety and how the mind works and what your day is going to look like and you'll know exactly what you're walking into and uh, showing them that you understand what their expectations are are really important 
And, you know, um, also prepping yourself when you come, like if we use New Zealand as an example, we get a lot of people come from New Zealand that do the training and we always get them to have their fixed state that they're arriving. And then about three weeks before they arrive, that's the time to start spamming everybody with your resume and telling them that you're going to be here on this date. You might not get a fixed time to do an interview. Often what you'll get is, oh, when you arrive, come and see me, come and come in the office and see me. The reason people do that, that and I know Jeff, has got this problem with recruitment is that they get a lot of people call them up and tell them that they're coming and then they just don't show up so people just don't believe you that you're coming until you're actually standing in front of them so if they do say come and see me that's just as good as you know getting an interview time so just make sure you note everybody that you've got to go and see and when you arrive you just run around and see everybody as quick as you can and then you know our normal scenario is with Kalgoorlie is that people that arrive that have done the the training and got their resume in a reasonable shape were through Jess. Um, yeah, they end up getting two or three job offers in the first week or two that they're there, but you've got to have your driver's license transferred over. You've got to have an Australian um, phone number. Um, and, and they've got to know you got it that you got, they got to know that you're happy to go to Kalgoorlie too. Um, that's the big thing. Yeah, definitely. And um, on another note, you're you're never, ever, ever going to get a job in production mining in WA that are going to pay for your flights from over east or from New Zealand unless you're a very specialised tradesperson that they are desperate for. So, um, you know, it's very, very rare that you will have your flights paid for. So you're either like an executive or you're, you yep. know, you're or high up on the crew. So charge up, up or above you know, they'll yep. fly, they'll fly you across the country, but uh-huh. um, entry level stuff, they won't. Um, before COVID, so, yeah, it was, you know, yeah. people would fly everybody around everywhere, but since COVID, it's just all, yeah, you got to be where the mine is when you start. Once you get, you know, a couple of years into it, then, you know, it's all up for, you know, debate and options and all that sort of wonderful stuff. But while you're trying to get your foot in the door, um, yeah, you need to be where the jobs are. You definitely do. So, yeah, hopefully that answers any everyone's questions. If anyone has any questions about any of this, please reach out. We're happy to have a chat or, you know, if, or to do another chat on another question. If you have another question about maybe relocating for different jobs and where would be the best place to go. Um, yeah, thanks for listening. Yeah, not a problem. So, yeah, if you could uh, share this information around and like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks. Thanks.